it's it's good that we know how to pick the color and also use the color value to do something. But what if we want to do this constantly? For example, what if our model is moving, moving around, finding their own position, but still also snapping and getting color information at the same time? So this one has been always uh, happening in start. So it only happens at one time. There was no uh, things happening in update. So I'm going to uh, do something to this script. But before I make any changes to this script, I'm going to make a copy of this script. So we keep the version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my scenes. I'm going to just make a copy of the scene. So just control D and change this name to number four, pixel reader move, whatever. And double click on it. So it's same scene, nothing changed. We're just making a progress. And in the script, I'm going to make a copy of random city, control D. And you cannot have a file has different name uh, than your, you cannot have a different, a script that has a different name with the file. So anyway, so I'm going to say random city. And I'm going to double click and change the name exactly same as the file name and close the previous script. So, because I'm going to make some changes here. Now, once you change this and save it, the error message will be gone. Great, and clear the error. Okay, so how do we do this in one time? Uh, there are a few different things. So we need to separate this because there are too many things happening in this line. What's happening is it creates, instantiates, and it's also using the color in the same time. So we need to separate the creation first, the first creation and the second snapping. And the snapping and getting color will be happening in one time every time. So we have to separate that into two. First of all, let's separate that by uh, looping this one more time. So int, uh, instead of using uh, instead of using uh, this 500, because now they became the child of this object. So what we can do is int i is zero, i is smaller than this dot transform, transform dot child count, i plus plus, uh, and the game object current house is this transform dot get child because now I have 500 of child so I can get one by one like this instead of using the 500 because what if you want to change this number to 600 you have to change it in two times which is higher chance to create error. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to project to terrain later. We are not going to project it in original position. Um, so we're going to cut this. And here we are going to use Vector three, the position is uh, the current position dot 
transform the position. So the position is my original position and I'm going to use that to project it to my terrain. Yeah, and then get the color information. So I'm not going to use the color information in the making. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm trying to separate this into two parts. So step one is instantiate. Step one. Step two, uh, project to terrain and get terrain information. Let's say just say get terrain information. Means projecting it and getting the color. Okay, so here we should just use position vector. Now you can just Follow me and just compare what we changed from the previous version. Okay, so whatever we are doing with color, we are going to we are going to cut it and paste it here. So we are going to do pure instantiation, and then here we are going to project it again. Uh, one thing we need to do is because, because this current position is, um, is actually projected position, we cannot guarantee that it's uh, hovering on top of my sky. Yeah. So in order to shoot a ray, we need something that is high up, if that makes sense. So I'm going to just forcefully add a vector to test the ray from a high up position. So in here, what I'm going to do is just create, add a new vector. Um, that is high on the sky. So maybe something like, I'm going to add something like 100. So me. So me. Uh, the so th this vec uh, let's say this ray or vector that you're creating now is based on the point from the like each instance, right? Yeah. And you're just racing it higher up, like as far yeah. as you can, and then shooting. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But why is this erroring? I think because you have the, the parentheses after the three numbers, no? Oh, yeah. Right. Say, okay, so I just added, so I forcefully moved the test position to high up so I can shoot the ray from up to down, make sure that it's always up on the mountain in the sky. All right, so I have that and position is my current house position and i'm using that to project it and create get my color information and i use that to color myself and i will use it to rotate so this will be constantly rotating so this is not very good but local scale is great. So for this rotate, we are going to do something different. Uh, I will show you why I don't like that rotate operation. Because it's not a fixed number. It's a operation so it keeps on rotating. So We didn't use the script, so we have to change the script. So we are not going to use the original script. We are going to use random city move script. We are going to use 
the sample cube house sample So I can just drag it from prefabs, sample cube house, and my terrain. Okay. And because I didn't do this in update, so the, we separated and it only happened once so now the step two if you think about it all of this can happen multiple times so now we can actually cut this all the step two control x and position this here and one thing we didn't change is the position so we didn't use this position to change their position. So what we are, I'm going to do is current house transform position is the projected position. Now it's going to project. So they're constantly rotating, yeah? But it's because position is a value. It's a fixed value. Rot local scale is a fixed value, but rotation is not a fixed value. It's an operation. So we are going to change that later. Uh, but first of all, we are going to add some movement. Um, I'm going to just add a very, very simple movement to all the child game objects. So in order to just make it clear, we don't have to do this again, but I'm going to just copy all of this. So I'm going to just do the moving uh, operation here separately so you can see what are the difference. So uh, step 1.5, 1.2. Houses. Yeah, just adding some moving gesture. Uh, so the position is current house position plus new vector three. Um, I'm going to add a going to the right position. F zero F. And I'm going to use this to refresh. So actually, we didn't have to add so many lines like this. Is position. So this means we made a new new vector using the original position, added a new value and we refresh that to this position. We don't have to write it like this long. Uh, we can just write it like this. It's simpler, like this. It's same thing. It means I'm adding this value to itself. Save it. And then now, It's going to go to the right and it's constantly changing its value. Uh, it's because it's grasping the value from below. And when there's no value, it just become black. So if it's, uh, if you want to see more clearly, we can go back to our, um, our original material. So you can see more clearly what's going on. So it's actually grasping the, the information while they're moving. So you can add any kind of movement. Is that okay? 
So that is the principle of a moving geometry grasping some terrain information. And you put it under uh, the void update because is that like an automatic like loop or something on, on the Unity? Sorry. So uh, you, you put it under like void update because that's like an automatic like uh, I guess loop. Yes, yes, because update happens every time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that is like provided by Unity. The two solution for one is start and one is update. All right, so now it's just about adding some more like interesting behavior. Um, yeah, and for example, we can create some random behavior by just adding some other uh, vectors to this position. So let's say new vector three random um, range from minus maybe three f to three f and give like a uh, zero f on y. So this is pretty much two dimensional movement. So now I gave some random value for their movement. Now they are doing doing that and grasping the terrain here. So it's a, it's now uh, so all this exercise so far was about grasping information from the below terrain. And now we are going to uh, kind of uh, exercise uh, a way to maybe make some more interesting movement. And then these two can be combined. Is that okay? <clears throat> All right, yep. cool. So we can close this one for now. We are going to copy these lines later to a new script. So keep this summer safe. <clears throat> Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to introduce a really simple script called void and we are probably not going to just write everything. Uh, I'm going to share the script with you, uh, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, void. void is a, is a script, it's, a, it's an algorithm that is designed for computer coding to mimic birds flocking, crowd simulation, and um, and like this kind of phenomenon. So it's a very uh, <coughs> kind of famous script, uh, which which is a very uh, good scripting structure that you can actually change and tweak uh, that script so you can. Like it's basically give, gives you a lot of opportunities for it to uh, create different types of uh, behavior. Not only this boys kind of behavior, but uh, the script uh, structure of it is actually very, very, uh, it, it's kind of quite typical for any object oriented coding language. So you can, it, I, I always use it to for a for a tutorial to kind of really initiate the structure so you can actually change the just change the behavior and keep the structure of the script uh, in order to achieve a lot of different results 